Right, so the spring has two notches. One sticks out from the side and one sticks up. So the one that sticks out from the side goes into there. Did you see that? Okay, now the bail arm goes in such a way that this bit sticking up on the spring here goes into that little hole. Okay. Okay, now the best way to do this is um, to insert the spring onto the bail arm side and then twist the bail arm right over until the other part of the spring goes into the, the housing. And as you can see, that's that's actually, at the moment, that's, that's trapped behind the, um, the bail arm rest, but I'm going to move that in a second. So, the other side then, you have another screw that goes in, which is also a captured pen. That just goes in. And that is how it should look, with a nice bit of snap on it. Okay, so the next part of the reel is um, the slider cam, which um, drives the, the winding of the line onto the spool. So this basically just inserts down, and um, because it's a sliding part, you generally oil it rather than grease it. And um, it has two little nuts. I'm going to put the other one on. They don't need to be mega, mega tight, but because the action is not upwards, it's sideways. So, essentially I'm going to put a little bit of real grease under there. And just um, get squeezed. And you don't need a huge amount. Sorry, this is real oil, not real grease. Uh, you don't need a huge amount, you just need a tiny bit. And um, this hole here, is where the cam locates. So the cam is next, and um, that's the cam there. You can see the little lug at the end that goes into the hole, like so. And then on top of that, you've basically got a cam wheel, and you can see the little cams underneath it. Um, so that goes on top of there, and we need a bit of oil on that. So that, essentially, when you turn that wheel, you should see the cam moving the spooler upside down, up, up and down. Okay. And a little bit of oil in there too, I think. Now this is a cog, so this is going to get greased also. So this is going to be a bit of the old pen reel grease. Um, Whatever you do, don't use car grease. <laughs> You'll find the year after your reel probably doesn't work properly. And that'll be the reason why. Okay. You don't need huge, huge, huge amount. Right, so next, the winding plate. And I think I incorrectly called it a baffle plate in the last video. And the reason I did that is because Mitchell have slightly mistakenly labelled their parts diagram. <laughs> So that's why. Um, but in actual fact, uh, this this is uh, you, know, you put a little oil on these. The plate that is used to wind the cam. The, the larger one goes into this, uh, like so. And um, there's a brass cog here. Now uh, the brass cogs take the weight of the fish. Um, the brass obviously is stronger than the, uh, the zinc metal, which is what the mess of it's made of. And so the brass cogs, um, that's basically your power cog, essentially. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually grease the cogs so they're all working properly. And again, you don't really want to overdo this. It's not necessary to have absolutely masses of grease on it. You just need enough. And you shouldn't worry too much about um, waterproofing because um, there aren't any iron parts inside here. All the, these cogs here are zinc, zinc um, alloy or aluminium alloy. I think they're zinc alloy actually. And um, the other cogs are brass, so brass is pretty seaproof even. You know, it's not gonna it's not gonna rot away particularly fast. 
these these bearing posts here yeah, they, they might be steel but they're quite good quality steel so they're not just going to disappear uh, very easily especially if they've got quite a good film of oil on them right so we're sort of getting there um, got a bit of grease on it you don't need to pack it out you just need to do that right so that then fits on top of here uh, like so and you might need to just wind it a little bit to get it to bed down and then there are three screws that go into here which I'm going to put in next okay once the screws are in that's your Mitchell force end more or less assembled um, I'm going to put a little bit of oil on here and I'm going to put a little bit of oil into the capture slot just here also just here and another amount of oil is going to go into there your spool clips over the top as you probably know if you use the wheel and you push that button to release it and essentially there's one more piece to go in and there's a little grub screw here which is used for lubricating the reel and it doesn't really have any mechanical function so you can essentially just screw that in and since we've just lubed the reel anyway we don't need to do any more okay so that's your Mitchell 410 reassembled you should be in a position where you can wind it now and with the ratchet in that position it will go both directions and you click the ratchet that way it should wind forwards but it should rely on the drag which is on here to go back in the other direction and it turns really nice and smooth that is absolutely beautiful and it's all been oiled and you can all wipe it down and put your line onto it now so just as a quick demo I think we'll probably just show you that that snacks back quite nicely okay so on the Mitchell 410 there, is a, there should be a small rubber piece which fits under here um, you can actually cast these yourself from um, polyurethane plastic it's not particularly difficult to do um, what I've got there is a piece of brass and um, I'm gonna just make a little piece to put in there at some point but the reel still works like that um, it doesn't work too well if, if you don't have that piece in there so that's, that's uh, very very nice working Mitchell 410 and it doesn't have an awful lot of wear on it um, so this is Avian Fish signing off from reassembly of the Mitchell 410 thanks so much for watching folks